Israel's longest-serving prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu, may soon be out of power. That's because a coalition of opposition parties spearheaded by centralist leader Yair Lapid and right-wing leader Naftali Bennett announced yesterday that they have reached an agreement to form a new government. Elizabeth Palmer is following this for us. Elizabeth, good morning. Good morning. So sort of give us the basics of what's going on here. This has got to be a major blow for Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, it really is. Uh, he's seen it coming, but um, the fact that the, uh, all these disparate parties, and we're talking, you know, centrist, uh, very far right, and believe it or not, an Arab uh, focused party have managed to cobble together um, a, a coalition uh, has surprised uh, everybody, including Benjamin Netanyahu. Now, that said, it's very fragile. Um, you imagine the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, it's got 120 seats in it. So these eight parties in all had to come up with 61 seats to get uh, a parliamentary majority. And once they were able to do that, they could, they, they could appoint a prime minister from one of the eight parties and go to uh, the president and say, look, we can form a government. But the majority is razor thin. It's one seat. So uh, th this is uh, not over yet. Uh, specifically, the Knesset itself, all 120 members, have to vote on allowing that coalition to become the government uh, next week. And already Benjamin Netanyahu is tries horse trading like crazy behind the scenes, trying to erode it and to, to rob it of a seat or two so it no longer has the majority it needs. Uh, I guess it's kind of one of the most obvious um, observations is that, you know, these parties actually don't have a lot in common other than their desire to get rid of Benjamin Netanyahu. Um, the parties differ when it comes to their stances on how to handle the Palestinian uh, situation. What has the response been like from Palestinian and Arab officials to this? Almost silence. Uh, there has been um, one very well-known Palestinian uh, activist has said that uh, at least Netanyahu's departure will allow him to properly go to trial on corruption charges, uh, and that will be good for the country. But overall, um, there has been very little uh, reaction, either among Palestinians and the Palestinian media or among Arab uh, journalists in Arab countries. Uh, one uh, organization, uh, a television station in the Gulf, said that uh, the Arab party joining that governing coalition was uh, treason, as far as they're concerned, to the Palestinians. But it's been remarkably mute. Um, maybe we should say that uh, Mansour Abbas, who leads the Ram party, that Arab party, um, he's really focused on Israeli Arabs, so Arabs who live inside Israel, and he wants to get them things like better health care and more money. So he hasn't really engaged with the larger Palestinian question. Uh, the Palestinians may be glad to see the back of uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, but uh, Naftali Bennett is not the man who is going to take Israel into serious peace talks. In fact, he's on the record as being opposed to an independent Palestinian state. So. Certainly uh, no jubilation or even optimism rising in the Palestinian political circles. Mm -hmm. um, and, you, and you brought up something there that while all of this is going on, while Benjamin Netanyahu is fighting to preserve his political life, uh, he's also, uh, you know, will possibly be fighting to preserve his future or rather his freedom um, because he's facing uh, bribery charges. Um, and the feeling was if he could still stay, if his, if his political career could stay alive, then perhaps he would be protected a little bit with his legal battles. But now that that looks like it's possibly winding down, what what are people saying about um, this, the bribery charges that he's facing now? Well, in fact, he is already on trial. So the trial started mm. uh, in May. 
and uh, his lawyers are in in court today, uh, arguing, uh, putting forward a defense to a multifaceted uh, charges list. You know, there's cronyism, and there was bribery, and accepting gifts, and some business chicanery. I mean, it's really complicated and copious. So he was not uh, prevented from being on trial because he was the prime minister, although he'd had to give up any ministerial portfolios he had, but he was on trial as the prime minister. There was some speculation that if he got into power again, he would try and pass a law protecting himself from legal proceedings. So if he, if, uh, he is, in fact, removed from the prime ministership, that's it. Then he will have to see this trial through uh, to the bitter end. And um, it's going to be long and complex. Um, and of course, uh, people in Israel on both sides are following very closely. It's, uh, it's a national drama. I bet. Uh, Liz, thank you very much. Pleasure.